Hello friends. This is Bones Fiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Goku fell in love with Pinkie Pie and got harem? Goku x My Little Pony. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. It was the night of the summer sun celebration and there were fireworks going off in the night sky to celebrate, as it was only mere minutes away before the sun rose. A certain group of six ponies, three fillies, one dragon, and seven pets were all sitting on top of a hill on a picnic blanket. They were all staring up into the sky. Rarity had Sweetie Belle by her side fast asleep, and the same can be said for Applejack and Rainbow Dash, who had the respective fillies next to them. Spike was barely awake as he sat on Twilight's back and all of the pets were huddled together asleep as well. The scene on the ground was peaceful, despite the fact that Pinkie Pie was down there, but she would make Discord jealous. But, elsewhere an epic battle was raging that would intertwine the fate of this world and that one. Peefed right. There was a loud explosion as dirt and flaming chunks of wood were strewn across the field from a narrowly avoiding energy blast. The being that fired the blast had a smug look on its face, HMPH, not bad for a pitiful monkey, it said. First person, go. Frost, don't get why, I'm still not done, I yelled, looking up, I was panting heavily and my eyesight was getting blurry, but I could still see the outline of Frost's figure. Frost was the same species as the defeated tyrants, Frieza, Cooler, and King Cold, but he resembled Frieza, a lot. The only differences are that the shiny parts on his body were a deep blue instead of purple. Come on, give me everything you've got you smelly dildo-shaped lizard. I smiled as I saw him get visibly pissed, but that smile instantly slipped away as he held his finger up, pointed towards the sky in an iconic pose, stance. A red ball the size of a wrecking ball formed above his finger, so you want it all? Fine, take it. The ball grew 100 times to the size of the spirit bomb used on Frieza. Super Death Ball. He yelled, sending the huge ball of energy flying towards me. I gulped down a lump in my throat, fuck, I thought. As I looked up, I got into the most well known pose to any fighter or person that knows me or the man that trained me. I spread my legs apart slight, put my hands behind my back and cupped them together. Ka me, a small blue ball formed in my hand. Ha me, it grew bigger and just as I was about to say the last word a small ball of bright light appeared in front of me without me noticing until the light engulfed me and then I was gone. Meanwhile a bright light appeared slowly and Twilight tried to wake Spike up, as he'd fallen asleep, Spike, wake up, the princess is raising the sun. Spike just mumbled, five more minutes mommy, and held on tighter to Twilight. She just shook her head, but as the light got brighter she was getting excited, as was every other pony. However, the excitement died when the light faded and standing in its place was a creature with a bright ball in its hands, almost as bright as the sun this close up. Back on Earth Frost was worried as he felt his attack hit the ground, but didn't sense any energy opposing it, as soon as he fully thought of this he went into full-blown panic mode. Fuck 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 fuck, he said, pacing back and forward, crap, py, pronounce as pi, is going to kill me, aw fuck. Frost was now hyperventilating. He sat down to think really quick, fuck, I just killed my best friend. At this point a loud scratchy voice appeared in his head, Frost, are you there? Frost nearly fell over when he heard the voice of King Kai, wait. King Kai that was it. Hey, King Kai, um, well I'm sure you were just watching but um, won't you find out if BJ is in the afterworld of HFIL? Frost asked quietly, but loud enough to be heard. Sure, give me a second. King Kai went silent for a minute and then came back, no, he's not in either, in fact according to old Kai, he's in a complete different dimension that not even Shenron could bring him back from, sorry Frost. And good luck with telling PY. I have to go deal with these two idiots messing up my planet. Hey no not my house. The line cut off. Well that's just great, I mean I'm happy I didn't kill him but still, will we ever see him again? Oh, oh fuck, I gotta tell PY. Maybe I can get that jerk to brag about it yeah. Yeah that might suit me better, but first I need a nap. Frost instantly passed out at that point. Back in Equestria I blinked as the light faded and I was ready to fire off the Kamehameha wave. 
but good thing my brain kicked in at the last second and told me to look before I fire, because if I did I would be shooting off into a crowd of ponies. I looked around frantically looking for somewhere to fire it but everywhere had a pony, so I did something I've never pulled off before without passing out for several days, I absorbed the energy from the attack and it disappeared, for once I didn't pass out, woo oh there goes my legs, I face planted into the ground and everything went black. I groaned as I woke up and HT was shining in my eyes, it was the sun, I think, wait, no, it was a large white pony as bright as the sun I pulled the blankets, wait huh? I looked down and saw that I was in a bed, to be more exact a hospital bed that looked like it was made hastily, so it was somewhat uncomfortable. Where am I and who are you? I asked as I looked at the pony, implying that I knew it could talk. The pony smiled warmly, you are in Canterlo's best hospital, and I am Princess Celestia, controller of the sun and day and the co-ruler of Equestria. I blinked in surprise, great so they can talk, and this one is royalty. Well I'm either really high or knocked the fuck out and since I don't do drugs I'm guessing the latter. Um, I don't mean to sound rude, but what are you? The princess raised an eyebrow, I assume you ask that because I have wings and a horn? I nodded, well, I am an alicorn. An alicorn? I asked. At this point a purple unicorn spoke up, also I realized that the room was filled with six other ponies, needless to say the room was cramped. An alicorn is a mixture of all three types of ponies. A unicorn like Rarity and I, by the way my name is Twilight. She said pointing a hoof towards herself and a pure white unicorn who I dubbed shall be called Marshmallow from now on, which caused me to chuckle some. Pegasi, like Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash, pointing to a rainbow maned Pegasus and a butter yellow Pegasus, who was hiding behind her mane, she was adorable. And then, Earth ponies like Applejack and Pinkie Pie, she finished by pointing to an orange pony with a Stetson on and a pink pony jumping up and down vigorously. I nodded at sat up as I yawned. They all seemed to back away from me when I did, what? I asked. W well, when you were asleep, they examined you to see what you were but stopped when they saw your teeth. Stuttered Twilight. I coked my head to the left in confusion, when it dawned on me, you all think I'm a carnivore and eat meat because of my canines, don't you? So you don't eat meat like a barbarian then? Rarity asked. I never said that, I said calmly and they all backed up a bit more except for the princess who seemed to having a knowing look on her face. It took a minute but Fluttershy was the first to speak up, although very quietly, why you're an omnivore. Rainbow Dash looked confused, an omni what? An omnivore, it's an animal or creature that eats both meat and plants. Twilight said proudly, but realized I still ate meat so went back to being quiet. Bingo. I said loudly and pretended to hold a mic, what does the lady win Bob? I made my voice slightly deeper, how about an all expense paid trip to the lovely Honolulu Hawaii? Where she can spend her day getting a massage, swimming in the crystal blue ocean, or just watching the sun set on the beach? I blushed as they all looked at me weirdly. Sorry, it's a thing, I rubbed the back of my head and looked down. Yes, well, now that you know about us, we need to know about you, Celestia said. Me. Huh, where to start? Oh yeah, but first I need two EAT. I decided to mess with them, and jumped towards them, but I felt I little bit groggy to get very far so I just kind of fell forward, but it had the same effect, they screamed and jumped back some, at which I just laughed at, sorry, sorry, you don't have to be scared, I don't eat ponies or anything, but I am hungry, so do you have any fish, it's really the only meat I eat. After I ate, much to the disgust oh everyone, they all left the room except Twilight and the princess, it was time to tell me story. Right, so you've heard of humans right? They nodded but Twilight said they were just myths. Well, they aren't, and since if I was asleep I wouldn't have had a dream this long, I assume I'm in a completely different dimension because most planets have heard of humans. But, where I'm from humans are the dominant species. So you are a human then? Asked the princess. I shook my head, no, I am not a human, I am a Saiyan, we are. To quote someone I was trained by, we are a proud warrior race and don't you forget it. I smiled as I remembered training under the prince of Saiyans and the strongest Saiyan in the universe. A Saiyan, I've never heard of that, said Twilight, obviously eager to learn something new. Right humans and Saiyans. Well let's see the only difference between us really by physical looks is that all Saiyans have tails like this. I moved my tail from out underneath the blankets and laid it next to me. 
At this point Twilight got really curious and decided to touch it and I instantly lost all my energy and went limp. Well fuck, can't move, wait no, I can feel my everything again. Are you okay? Asked Twilight frantically. Yeah, I'm fine. I'll get to that later. Anyway like I was saying, hey. Saiyans are, were the beings that inhabited a place called Planet Vegeta, named after King Vegeta. A bit arrogant if you as me. But above him we were ruled by a tyrant named Frieza, yet he blew up our planet for fear of a legend coming to fruition. The princess and Twilight gasped, yes, well not many Saiyans made it off planet. A few were the prince, Vegeta, his escort, Nappa, the hero of our universe, Goku, his brother, Raditz, and half-brother, Turles, the legendary Saiyan Brawly, and my parents who sent me to Earth when Frieza's uncle iced, conquered the planet they were on. I took a drink of my apple cider as I continued my story. But I grew up on Earth since I was one and I was raised by a nice family, oh I never told you my name did I? They shook their heads, right, well my name is Braxton Berkeley, but my friends call me BJ. Hamo but that's not my actual name by name is Shio, well my Saiyan name is Shio. Celestia nodded, what do you prefer to go by Shio, Braxton or BJ? I sat in thought for a good minute before I replied, Shio, I'd prefer Shio, I mean I don't know how long I'm going to be here for and if I can't get home then well might as well go by Shio. Now where was I oh right my life on earth, but first I want to explain more about Saiyans and what happened to Frieza. So as I said Frieza destroyed our planet for fear of a legend coming to fruition, and that legend was, that a Saiyan would rise up and become what he feared the most to defeat him and he would be known as the legendary Super Saiyan. Now that did happen and that Saiyan was my first mentor and my friend Goku. I pulled out a picture of Goku and showed it to them and then I showed them a picture of Goku in his super form. You can show those to the others if you'd like to after I'm done here. Twilight nodded and enveloped them in her magic, thanks, I will. Now Goku did defeat Frieza but his life was still filled with many hardships and trials. I went through stories had Goku and Vegeta told me. All in all I recapped the time when Cell was around, Boo, Baby, and the Black Star Dragons, which of course led to the explanation of everyone one and all the superforms and etc. But I left out the whole great ape thing I don't want them to get scared, when I got to the Dragon Balls and explained how they worked the two had their jaws on the floor. So that's that, oh also every time a Saiyan get close to death and recovers his power skyrockets past its previous limits. Twilight managed to close her mouth long enough to speak, Wow it sounds like your race is invincible and incredibly strong. I laughed, well the ones that were on earth before me are strong yes, me on the other hand I am actually the weakest Saiyan on earth, Pan only being slightly weaker my power level compared to Gotten is dwarfed and do not get me started on Goku's power level. What is a power level? They both asked. Huh? Oh a power level is the indicator as to how strong you are. Take me for example I can got toe to toe with Frieza 100% and he was what 120 million strong so yeah my power level is 120 million give or take a few, and I still haven't obtained my super form yet, but Goku his normal self is within the billions, it is scary. Their jaws dropped, again, wait yours is in the millions? Twilight asked incredulously. I nodded, yeah and the thing about power levels is that people who aren't trained properly can't see them and need a device called a scouter. Me on the other hand do not need a scouter but I have one on hand just in case, it should be in my pants pockets. Now despite all that we do have one weakness and I'm sure you know what that is from earlier. Princess Celestia nodded, your tail I am assuming. Yep, our tails they are extremely sensitive and if grabbed or touched in any manner other than softly and gently our power drops insanely fast and we can't move. But that's the history before I really did anything but after all that I arrived and like I said was raised by a nice family who found one other alien before me but had a kid of their own. Their child is a girl named Pion, but we called her PY, and the other kid who hey found I should hate with my very soul but I don't ease my best friend and my brother, he is the son of Iced, Frost. Wait your best friend and brother is the son of the tyrant that got you separated from your parents? I nodded. Yes but we were so close before we learned all that so it didn't really affect us considering he was taken away and sent here so he didn't even know his father, but that leads to my training with Goku and Vegeta, it was rough but worth it. Now since I really don't want to go through boring stuff I'm just going to say what you want to hear, 
I was sparring with Frost when a bright white light engulfed me and the last thing that happened before I woke up was that I was surrounded by well ponies at night. The princess nodded and looked off into the sky, I see, well it has been a long day and it is time for the moon to come up and my sister to watch over the land as I am tired, and it should be a beautiful full moon tonight. I instantly tensed up at this, close the blinds, now, and whatever you do, do not open it until the morning, I said faster as I saw the night start to get darker. The princess and twilight looked at me oddly, just do it, no time to explain if I see the moon. They didn't close the blinds and the moon was poking over the horizon, now. I bellowed out and my energy flaring enough for them to feel it. At this they got the hint and closed the blinds, sorry, it's just, look I don't like talking about that part of my race since no one really knows what I'm going through other than other Saiyans. Well why don't you tell me, since it is my moon? Said a voice from outside the door and who that voice belonged to walked into the room, it was another alicorn but the opposite of Celestia and was a royal blue. Who, I started but was cut off. My sister, Luna, princess of the night and the other ruler of Equestria. Princess Celestia said. Oh, I said sheepishly but now that I looked at here I felt a lot stronger than I ever really have, huh? must be because of my Saiyan blood and the fact that she embodies the entire moon but I wonder why I'm not transforming from looking at her, probably because she isn't the moon exactly. Princess Celestia stood up and walked towards the door, well, I was a tiring day today I think I shall go sleep, twilight go tell your friends what Shio told us. And Shio, tell my sister what you told us. I groaned but nodded, all right, Princess Luna was it, right well um have a seat I suppose and I shall tell you everything. So I recapped everything I told the princess in twilight and while I was doing that twilight was updating her friends. Luna nodded as I finished, I see so why did you get upset when I was bringing up the moon does it induce fear unto you? She asked. I shook my head, no, not exactly the moon gives my species strength and a full moon makes us transform into giant tailed apes, very few of us have control over that form, I am sadly not one of those few so I avoid the full moon whenever it is out. Oh also just having you around I feel much stronger than normal. It looked like she blushed a bit at this, but I just ignored it. Well, that's different so you are afraid of the moon then? She asked looking like she was going to cry. Afraid of the moon? No I love the moon in the night, I probably should say this considering the fact that the day and night manifested into well you and your sister but, I thin k the night is a much more beautiful and romantic setting than the day it's also much more peaceful and it's nice to just sit outside staring off into the stars. I was sure she was blushing a lot at this point, again I shrugged it off. No, what I'm afraid of is hurting innocent beings by transforming into a monster I can't control, but you probably would know about that. I said off-handedly. As soon as I said that I felt the atmosphere change and she had a dark look over her eyes, you have no idea how wrong you are, she said with sadness and hatred in her voice. I looked at her with a frown and put my hand on her back, as she had moved closer while I was telling my story so I wouldn't have to be as loud, hey, I'm sorry I didn't mean it, I know I don't know what you went through and you don't have to tell me, but I'm glad I could tell someone who wasn't my family or the rest of my race. Thank you, Luna. The night princess looked at me in shock, why are you thanking me, all I did was listen, I did not give you advice or help you solve your problem. I shrugged, maybe not but sometimes you just need to tell someone something you don't feel obligated to tell. You'd be surprised how much better it feels, and I'm assuming whatever happened with you, you told everyone you were sorry or something because you felt obligated and you had to explain because again you felt obligated too. She nodded, yes I did, I well, when my sister and I were a thousand years younger there was a time when I was well jealous of her. Jealous, why would you be jealous? I asked. Well unlike how I see it now that ponies respect the night in their own sense they use it for sleep and to restore any other energy the lost during the night. I saw it as that they shunned me by not staying awake and playing in the moonlight as which they did with the sun, it angered me greatly and the hatred, rage and jealousy took over me turning me into the monster known as Nightmare Moon, and my sister had to banish me for a thousand years on the very thing I controlled. She was obviously holding back tears at this point. I rubbed her back a bit before speaking. I see but I would have felt the same way honestly and I am sure if it was the other way around Celestia would have done the same thing and so would you, it's just how the world works I suppose, but you got a second chance, right? Everyone has accepted you haven't they and I'm sure some even prefer you over Celestia, so you know all's well that ends well. 
I said and I felt my eyelids getting heavy and next thing I knew I was engulfed by darkness. I was trapped in my mind all I saw was a land of fire and destruction and I couldn't control what I was doing, I looked down and saw Frost and P.Y. lying on the ground unconscious. I opened my mouth as I felt energy build up inside of it, no stop, don't. I yelled at myself trying to stop from doing what I was about to do, but I had no control over it then a yellow beam erupted from my mouth headed straight towards my family, but before it could hit I heard a calming voice and everything stopped and went white. I looked around and saw Princess Luna standing a few feet away. Where? Where are we? I asked looking around seeing small and large bubbles that had images going through them so it looked like circular televisions. We are in the dreamscape, a place that only I can access unless I pull other ponies into from their dreams. You seem to be no different, but the nightmare you had was very troublesome, so I thought I should intervene. She said looking at each dream sphere, as I decided to call them. I'm glad you did. I I don't think I could watch that again, I said as I sat down and thought about my life back at home and all the times I would wake up to my mom comforting me. Again, you've had these nightmares before? She asked. I nodded, every night for as long as I can remember, the only time I can sleep peacefully is after a good night of training, it's also another reason why I love night I can train and think in peace, with Frost joining me whenever he stays up. The only night I don't stay up is the night of a full moon and if I do, I go off into the mountains somewhere far away so I don't cause any damage. I sighed and looked down, I could tell Luna was looking at me sadly. Are there any times when you didn't go into the mountains? She asked carefully as to not upset me. Yeah, it was when I thought I could control it if I tried hard enough. I almost ended up killing my entire family because of it, Goku had to come and stop me because Frost wasn't strong enough, but that's when we decided to be trained by Goku and Vegeta. But the one thing I wasn't able to do is get control over that beast inside me. But Frost is now strong enough to stop me whenever I go berserk, but just barely, I fear one day he won't be around or I'll hurt him and he won't be able to stop me. I looked up and saw that Luna had sat next to me. It seems to be a tough life that you have during the full moon. May I ask what exactly causes the transformation? Well in all reality it's the same thing that makes me strong, my tail, it's the key to everything and without it I wouldn't be as strong as I am now, but neither would I turn into a great ape, drawbacks you know. I leaned back and watched the dreams of a mint green pony with a mint green and white mane, chasing what looked to be a human, although a little deformed, it made me smile a little. Well if you ever have nightmares like that again, I just want you to know I will be watching over you to make sure you don't as I do for everyone under my domain, and if I cannot, know that it is because I might be in another dream, not that I am ignoring you. Now it is time to wake up as the sun is coming up and my sister and the elements would like to discuss things with you. She said standing up and leaving, she slowly faded away as my eyes began to open. I stretched and yawned, oh man that was a restless night, well time to get up. I sat up slowly with no problem but as soon as I tried to stand up I instantly bent over as if I was being pushed down harshly, you are k, ga, I yelled out as I slammed into the floor with a loud thud. A few seconds later the room was filled with the same group that was there yesterday. Minus Princess Luna but with something else. Oh are you okay darling? Asked Rarity. What is that thing? Asked an unfamiliar voice followed by a somewhat loud crack and the same voice yelling out. Ow, that heard Twilight. Sorry, Spike, but you don't call Sumpony an it, that's just rude. Twilight said sternly. I managed to move my head up and I saw that Spike seemed to be a small dragon. Hey a dragon cool, and rarity, I'm fine it's just the gravity on your planet is a bit too great for my body right now and my power level isn't high enough to handle it, let me just, the air started to warp around me as a small area around me began to glow a deep blue color and I slowly pushed myself up, ha. Huh? I yelled loudly increasing my power more until I was able to stand up and the room was shaking a bit, and I shut off my power at that point with the air going back to normal. Woo, okay that's much better. Now Luna said you all wanted to ask me something. Also, Spike, I'm a Saiyan and my name is Shio. Also you are the coolest looking dragon I have ever seen. Spike smiled proudly. Well 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 the coolest huh? You see that rarity this cool guy thinks I'm the coolest dragon he's ever seen. He grinned at rarity. Rarity smiled back. Well of course you are my whittle spiky wikey. I laughed. Well anyway like I was saying you all wanted to ask me something? Princess Celestia nodded, yes but I think it would be better to do this in the throne room, 
as we don't want you to be hidden from the ponies of Equestria we shall also be doing this in front of an audience. I nodded and gulped, great I have to speak in front of a lot of ponies, yay, I walked out of the room following the six smaller ponies and passed Celestia who stopped me. I know what you said about liking the night over the day, and thank you for that I think Luna needed to hear that from some pony. I nodded, you're welcome, but it's also very true, I just do, I'm not saying the daytime is bad, it is beautiful but the night just has something that the day can't touch. At this I followed them to the throne room and as I entered through two huge golden doors decorated with various gems and designs. The heads of hundreds of ponies of different shapes, shades, and colors turned towards me and many of them had shocked or angry looks plastered on their faces, and as soon as I smiled to show that I wasn't any threat they changed from shocked and angry to worried, and I realized they must have seen my canine so I closed my mouth and just looked forward to see Luna sitting on her throne, which was a nice obsidian color with gemstones that were purple blue and red here and there. Celestia was already in her throne, somehow, I'm guessing through some sort of teleportation, which was white gold and had gemstones of the opposite color scattered throughout it. Shio the Saiyan, of planet Earth, please come forward. Celestia said loud enough to have the attention directed back towards her. I started to walk forward up to the throne and stopped before them and bowed, yes your majesty? You may stand, she said surprised that I knew how to address royalty in front of an audience. I have called you to this audience today to have you tell your story of how you managed to arrive here in Equestria as well as to tell the story you told me yesterday as I'm sure it would be an interest to all of us and to confirm that you aren't a threat. I gulped and nodded and turned towards the crowd as I began to tell the story for a third time in two days. When I finished a lot of ponies looked relieved to know that I do not intentionally want to harm anything and that I can control my power. Very good. Now the other reason we called you here today was to see where you would prefer to live. Princess Celestia said. I looked up at her in shock, tea to live your majesty? She nodded, yes a place to live, we are willing to build you a house in the nearby town of Ponyvalor, she was cut of by Luna. Or you can stay here in the castle, but if you stay here in the castle you will have to find some form of a job. She said obviously giddy, again I shrugged it off as having someone interesting around. At this point a white unicorn who held his head up proudly but in a snobbish manner spoke up, Auntie you can't seriously be think of allowing this this monkey to stay in the castle and filthy up everything. I laughed quietly and mumbled to myself, this monkey can still kick your ass, easily, but of course the only people close enough to hear me were the princesses who had to hold back a giggle. But the unicorn obviously saw my lips move and he got offended, what did you say monkey? Care to say it to my face? He said angrily. Blue blood that is enough, and yes we do have the offer open for Shio to stay here if he so pleases. Shio, I am sorry for my nephew's behavior. Celestia said quickly. I waved it off, it is quite alright, he reminds me of my brother when he kept calling me a monkey, which by the way wasn't an insult considering that's closer to what I am. I unwrapped my tail from around me as it started to swish side to side by itself, even though my brother isn't as pompous, but I think he'll stay here in the castle. Much to my enjoyment Blue Blood got upset and just stormed out, but something I felt was a flare of energy from Luna, she had a smile on her face but she obviously was more excited than that, I wonder why. As for my job, do you have a royal army or guard, my way of fighting can come in handy if needed. Celestia nodded, yes we do, shining armor do you have an open position? A white unicorn with a blue mane nodded, yes there is, but it's a captain spot and you know how you enter the captain rank. He said with a warning. She sighed, yes I do, but you would be surprised at how strong this young Saiyan is. Well if you think he's ready, we'll have the ceremony tomorrow, but I shall need to inform the other officers, Shining Armor said. Wait, I'd rather be on the night guard as daytime is a time I generally either use for sleep or my own time, I said quickly. Celestia looked at me strangely but eventually nodded and waved Shining Armor off to tell the captain of the night guard. Now the matter of your living quarters, we can build you a place of your own or you can take one that's vacant. I thought about it for a second, I'd like an area to be made, but I want Luna to supervise it. Alright that can be arranged but it won't be done until late tonight, if that's alright with you. Princess Celestia said. I nodded and she dismissed everyone. I walked up to Luna and stood there for a minute as she was talking to one of her night guards. Hello, Princess Luna, 
I was coming to tell you on how I want my room to be but honestly I don't think I need to you should be able to get it right so just let me know when it's done, okay? Before I could leave Luna put a hoof on my shoulder, I turned around and looked at her. I was wondering if, I cut her off, yes, just let me know when, I said. But you don't know what I was going to ask, she said quietly. Really, what were you going to ask? I said nonchalantly. I was going to ask if you wanted to do something after your house was done? she asked. And like I said, yes, just let me know when. I walked off before she could say anything but I waved her goodbye. Throughout most of the day I spent walking around the castle talking to different ponies, a lot of them warmed up to throughout the day, and as the day slowly began to change to night everyone's favorite pompous prince appeared. You monkey-brained barbarian you dare steal the attention away from me, Prince Blueblood? I'll have you thrown out of here faster than you could clean the dirt off of my hooves. He tilted his head down and scd his hoof across the ground. Then, he charged. I had my back turned to him so I really didn't see him charging but I heard him and so did the mare he was talking to before I came into the room, but right before his horn stabbed me in the back I flared up my energy, and not by much as he only had a 1000 power level, pitiful, and sent him fly back about a good 20 feet. You aren't very strong nor smart for a prince are you? Ah well and I thought you'd give me a good challenge, see ya later blue. I walked off and waved, to my happiness he did what I wanted him to do, he charged me again, but what I didn't expect was a ball of energy to hit me in the back off my head so I stumbled a bit. Ha! Huh. Can't take a bit of magic now can you? He said eyely, and you wanted to join the night guard, how foolish, he sniffed. Now I'm a pretty calm guy and I let insults fly over my head but one pet peeve I have is when someone sniffs at me, do not sniff at me. You, try that magic blast again I'll show you a, magic, blast. I growled at him. Oh so you think you can handle my magic do you? Well how about this? His horn started to glow and a small ball of light blue energy, which I'm guessing was magic. I could feel it had the same properties as key. I waited for him to fire it at me and he did. I let it get at least 5 feet away from me before I raised my hand. How you intend to block it? Don't be a fool that is a powerful magic spell that I created specifically to incinerate anything it touches. He spoke like he'd already won. I bent my middle finger down and wrapped my thumb around it and when it got within an inch of my hand I flicked the spell off into the sky and incredulous speed and power, well incredulous for anyone who hasn't seen Goku, or anyone stronger than me, in action. Blue Blood's jaw dropped, but how, that spell, I developed it after one of Auntie's spells, you shouldn't have been able. I had walked up to him and closed his mouth and whispered menacingly to him, fury in my eyes if you've ever seen fairy tale or one piece imagine when they are pissed the fuck off look you pompous piece of horse shit, you are weak, unbelievably weak, and you sniffed at me. Do you understand? He nodded, good, now I want you to realize something I used a very small amount of my power to deflect that, hell I had to use more energy to stand up this morning I'll even give you a taste of my power. I stood up and flared my power up to only 25,000, but it was enough to make the ground shake and small rocks to float in the air around me. Blue blood whimpered as he turned tail and ran away yelling out that he would get me later or something, I just lowered my power and apologized to the mayor for having to see that. As I was walking I was approached by a night guard. Hello, how may I help you? I asked politely. Princess Luna has requested your audience, said the guard, waiting for my response. I nodded, alright let her know I'll be there as soon as possible. After that the night guard flew off and I just walked to the throne room. When I walked in I saw Luna sitting on her throne reading a scroll of sorts but when she heard the door open and close she teleported the scroll off somewhere else. Shio, I'm glad you could make it, I, well I wanted to show you your living quarters personally. She smiled and walked over to a nearby door that wasn't there before. The door was made out of the same obsidian that Luna's throne was made out of but it had swirls of blue running through it and white specks scattered about, it looked like the night sky and. Wait it didn't look like the night sky it was the night sky, I knew this because the stars were moving, there were shooting stars and red stars and blue stars, and then something completely blew my mind, when we got close to the door the stars rearranged into my name. Whoa, is that where my room is? I asked, still stupefied. Luna giggled at me and nodded, yes that is the entrance to your wing. I wasn't prepared for what I saw next, when she opened the door, all I have to say is that she wasn't playing when she said wing. It was a large hallway with at least 20 doors on each wall all made of the same material the first door was made of, 
What are behind all these doors? I asked in amazement. Well most of them are living compartments that can support up to 50 soldiers I'd say, and since there are what around 200 doors in total and 100 of them are used for living, while the rest are restrooms, recreation rooms and cafeterias. She said smiling at my shocked face. This wing can hold up to 5,000 ponies? I asked still stunned. Well if we were to change every room into a living space then it would be 10,000. Luna said that like it was nothing. Th that's an entire army, I have an entire army. I just looked around and when I saw a staircase I was even more curious. Luna nodded, yes you shall have an entire army when you are a general. Wait a general I though I was to be a captain? I said quietly. Well, yes but in the night guard the only opening I could get you in was a general, I hope you make it, this will still be your living space if you don't, but not many of my subjects will like it, now would you like to see your room? She asked. I nodded eagerly and she walked up to huge double doors and just like the rest it was made of the same material but there was one big difference, other than being gigantic, it had my name made out of the brightest stars and had a few lines of text underneath in smaller less bright stars but bright enough to be distinguished. It read, Commanding General Shio, Leader of the Southern Knight Army and Guard and Proud Saiyan Resident of Equestria, Entrance only granted with P-E-R-M-I-S-I-O-N. Needless to say I gaped at it and she told me to touch the door, when I did a small section started to melt away and I backed up, but I realized that's the door. It's okay. Go take a look I'll be waiting out here if you need me. Luna nudged me forward with a hoof. I walked into my room, and I know I said this enough but seriously I was stunned. It was a huge room, it was dark as night and the ceiling and walls had stars in them moving around at different speeds, the windows looked like they could be adjusted if I wanted them to. My bed was a grand bed that looked like it was made out of the universe itself and when I touched it, it was cool like the coldness of space was intertwined with it, I had a bathroom and a kitchen, I even had a recreation room with simple things in them. But what caught my attention the most was the moon that moved across the sky. Aluna can you come here please? I asked slowly backing towards the door. Yes, is something the matter? She had a knowing smirk on her face. Uh does that moon change its form you know like full moon quarter moon etc? I asked. Yes it does, but don't worry, I made sure that I carries none of the energy of the moon or myself so you can't transform under the full moon as I'm assuming you've never seen it for more than a few seconds before turning into a great ape, she said happily. I looked back up at the moon as it changed into a full moon, and I almost had a heart attack because I thought I was going to change and start rampaging, but when I didn't I looked up at it and saw its beauty. I turned around and had my head down and my fists clenched. Shio, are you alright? I can make it so it doesn't change into a full moon if you would Lee. She stopped talking as I wrapped my arms around her. Thank you, thank you so much. I was now crying, staining her fur. Thank you, Luna, this means so much. She comforted me for the length that I cried, which was until I fell asleep, and for once I didn't have any nightmares. Dude, where are you? We're all worried sick. And another question, how am I talking to you in a dream? asked Frost. I shrugged, Frost, I honestly have no idea how we are talking to each other, maybe one of the Kai's or maybe Luna, but why are you complaining? Also, if I were to tell you the story of how I got to where I'm at, you'd just fall asleep, I said, rolling my eyes. Frost raised an eyebrow, obviously ignoring my last statement, so, who is Luna? I laughed, trust me, you wouldn't believe me if I told you and if I did. Like I said, you would just fall asleep. But did you guys find a way to bring me back? Frost looked down and sighed, about that. Well the thing is, the dragon balls have disappeared, not even the Namekian's dragon balls or the black star balls are here, it's too convenient to be a coincidence. I looked up at him in surprise, how long ago was it when the balls disappeared? Frost looked up at that, well from what Bulma told us when she gathered everyone, the disappeared about a few minutes, after, you left his eyes widened in sudden realization you don't think i nodded yes i think whatever had to deal with me being transported to where i am also had to deal with the dragon balls disappearing where they are at though i have no idea i noticed that frost looked worried and i could tell what was going through his head i put my hand on his shoulder frost i know what you were thinking it's okay man i promise i'll find a way home but enough of this solemn talk how about we spar I mean it is a dream we won't really be hurt. He smiled and jumped back, already in fighting stance, well get up, I need something to hit, he said with a smirk. 
I stood up slowly, says the only one of the Lizen race who can't reach his fifth form. He just growled at Mean and transformed into his second form which was just a taller more muscular version of himself and then into his third and stopped. His third form looked a lot like the aliens from the movie. Well aliens. I flinch every time I see him do that, dude that looks so gross every time you do that, how does that not hurt? He shrugged, used to it, I suppose, but you can't be talking about me reaching fifth form, you can't even go super, you know who could go super at a younger age before you? Godin and he followed young trunks around. I powered up to 45% as it was equal to his third form, TCH, whatever but bring it on lizard boy. I flew at him at full speed. Oh now you're asking for it peanut, he shouted as he charged full speed at me. Back in the dreamscape Luna watched in awe as the brothers fought, he has this much power? It's only a dream and I can still feel the air trembling, the only other ponies that are this strong are the strongest generals in mine and my sister's guard. Though we are stronger, I sense that he would easily overpower us, just how strong is this Saiyan? Needles to say, she was impressed and she had no doubts that he would pass the trials. A few hours of sparring later I was panting and was a bit worse for wear when I saw the edges of the dream starting to deteriorate, hey Frost. I yelled out to him, tell mom and dad that I love them and tell PY that I miss her. I was able to get off a wave to my brother before my dream completely disappeared and I woke up. When I fully woke up I thought it was night time still, but I realized that I was in my room. I looked up at the artificial full moon and smiled, it truly is beautiful. I sighed not wanting to get up but today was a big day, well time to get dressed. I grumbled to myself, as I got up the blankets fell off me and a kitten was sleeping on my legs, it was a navy blue and had golden swirls throughout its fur. It had a collar that looked like a nebula in deep space on and had a note attached, it read. Dear Shio, Tia and I request your presence in the main chamber after you get dressed, I suggest that you wear your best suit as we have some, company. Also. I hope you enjoy your pet, she is known as a nocturne cat, only found in very rare areas of Equis, they prefer the night and feed off of starlight, also, she is the kitten of my dear Harmony, you may name her whatever you please. Sincerely, Princess Luna. I looked down at the kitten and ran a finger down its back and smiled when I heard her purr, I think I'll call you, Wuna. She mewed and curled into a ball. When I got up, I put her on one of the pillows and pulled my blanket over her. I walked to my closet to see what wardrobe awaited me. When I opened the door I was pleasantly surprised to find everything was very similar to what I would wear back home, shoot it even had my training gear. Among that there were dress clothes of all shades and colors, hats, ties and shoes to go along with each suit, all in all it was very elaborate. After looking through my wardrobe for a little bit I settled on a nice pure white suit that came with a silver tie, silver belt, silver watch pure white shoes and even a pure white fedora with a silver feather with silver lenses in the wit rimmed glasses in the hem of it. I took the suit out of the closet and walked to the small changing area that had three mirrors and changed quickly, not to sound wide to myself but I look pretty damn good. I said out loud to no one in particular. I walked over to the mirror and took off my hat to see that my hair was as it always was, medium in length, well height really since it stood up, and with one lock hanging over my face and a small strand to the right of it. A lot of people said me and Gohan looked like twins because of it, but because I'm a pure blood saiyan, my hair never grows, can be cut, or can be styled differently is evident when I tried to put gel in my hair to keep it down but my hair just bounced back up leaving gel splattered all over the mirror. I picked up my fedora and put it on, and walked to the door, well, let's see why I needed to wear a suit. In a remote part of Equestria a bright light crashed through the roof of a cave and hit a creature on the head flinging it on the ground. As the creature stood up he looked at the strange object as the light died down around and the object left in its place confused the creature. So he did the only thing he knew and brought it to the one creature who knew more about the world than he. As he ran through the cave up a path into a darker and larger chamber a voice cried out tell him to halt. What are you doing entering my chamber without permission young one? Said the feminine voice with emerald green, cat-like, eyes glowing in the dark. The smaller creature stammered and pulled the object from out of a pouch on his side, I found this in the lower chambers your highness, he said bowing and looking down. The source of the feminine voice and green eyes stepped out of the shadows. She was the same height as Celestia, if not slightly taller, her body was a slick black green color and her body was composed of a material called chitin. 
Her hooves had holes in them as well as her mane and tail. She had fangs and of course those large emerald cat-like eyes, a jagged horn and to top it off she had a small crown upon her head. She was the changeling queen, Chrysalis. You say you found this in the lower chambers? She asked the smaller changeling, grasping the object in her magical grasp. It nodded without looking up, why yes, she passed the object across her face, the orange ball and four red stars reflecting off her eyes, so this is the fabled dragon ball you told me of? She asked looking into the shadows. A short lizard-like creature stepped out of the shadow and grinned evilly, in total there are seven and the will grant any wish you could dream of, but yes that is what they look like. Thank you Lord Frieza, the information will be most helpful, you, she said looking at the youngling, go and tell the hive of what you have heard. The changeling nodded quickly and ran off, leaving the changeling queen to cackle in the background, having it echo throughout the hive and forest, causing any creature within listening distance to shiver coldly. Back at Canterlot Castle I knocked on the large golden doors ad was met by two day guards, may I enter? I asked politely. They nodded and opened the grand doors, unlike the day where I was asked if I wanted to stay here the entire room was empty and only the twilight and her friends were there, also one pony I've never seen. She was tall and bright pink and her mane and tail are white pink and purple in color, she had a crown and was an alicorn like Celestia and Luna, so I assumed she was a princess. When I walked up to the thrones, I bowed politely, your majesties, twilight and friends, it's a pleasure to see you, again. Celestia smiled kindly, you may stand, also I'd like you to meet my niece, Princess Mi Amore Cadenza, she said looking to the pink alicorn. Princess Cadenza laughed, you can just call me Cadence, but what is your name? I raised an eyebrow at Celestia and Luna, you didn't tell her? They shook their heads and Luna spoke up, well, we told her about you, but not your name, we thought that should be left up to you. I nodded, well, it's a pleasure to meet you Princess Cadence, my name as well. I have two, one is a name I'd like to keep for my home, but I can tell you my original name, it's Shio. It's a pleasure to meet you, Shio but if you'll excuse me I have a few things to talk to Twilight and her friends about. She bowed and walked out of the throne room with the girls and Spike following. I turned to the princesses and scratched my cheek, Erm, is that all you needed me for? Not to be rude or anything, but I kind of have to go get ready for my trial that you know, have prepared for me, Sue. Actually, that is one of the reasons we have called you here, your trials have been postponed, Luna explained. I was actually shocked by that, postponed. For how long? Luna shrugged, that, I do not know, but we shall inform you when your trials will commence, until then we thought that since the elements are here today you could go to their town of Ponyville. I shivered visibly at that statement, uh, I don't think that's the best idea, I'm not really sure how they would react to me. Celestia laughed, she actually laughed at that, sorry, but that town has seen worse and more strange things, you shouldn't be too worried, especially if you stay close to Twilight and her friends. I sighed, fine, I'll do it, so where can I find them? She looked out the window to the left, they can be found in the garden down there. I turn around and walk away waving my head slowly, thanks, I'll be back later. As I walked through the halls I made sure that there were no guards or just anyone watching in general before flying off at breakneck speeds towards the garden. While I was flying my mind began to think of what Frost told me last night, the dragon balls weren't on earth anymore, does that mean they were here somewhere? Well if they were then that means I'd have to look for them, but I guess there is no rush, there doesn't seem to be any evil forces here. Oh hey look there they're well better land. In the garden a few minutes before Shio arrived Cadence was sitting next to a statue of some military pegasus when she spoke up, girls I wanted to talk to you about the crystal empire. Twilight looked up at her former full sitter, is something wrong with the crystal heart? Is that brute sombra back? Oh his robe did not match him at all. Rarity said dramatically. Fluttershy looked down and spoke quietly, Oh I hope it isn't anything that'll hurt the animals. Well whatever it is, we'll be able to handle it princess, you can count on us, Rainbow said proudly, puffing out her chest. Cadence shook her head slowly, it's none of that girls, it's. Pinky bounced up and down vigorously, oh 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 let me guess. She took a deep breath and then went off faster than Rainbow could fly. 
The entire kingdom is all mopey dopey again and there are Reba D guys coming from all sides and the only way to save Everpony is to throw the biggest party ever to cheer Everpony up so you and Shining can use the crystal heart. She finished with a wide smile. Cadence shook her head and blinked a few times trying to process what was just said, uh, no, Pinky, it's none of that, anyway, Chrysalis has been spotted outside of the Crystal Empire's borders, and I can't do anything about it until Shining gets back from his mission. Cadence, what does that mean? Do you need us to use the elements? Twilight asked. Cadence paused to think, hmm, well yes but not at the moment, I also came to talk to you about that young Saiyan, what do you all think of him? All the girls looked down thinking on how to answer that, when Spike spoke up, well, we may only know his past and the past of the people who trained him and stuff, but from that I'd say he's a really cool guy, and he's really strong. He sounds like a superhero if you ask me. Twilight groaned and mumbled, Spike and his superheroes. She looked up and saw Shio walking through the hallway above them and she knew that hallway only led to the garden, uh, Shio is on his way so I think we should just all agree on that we don't really know him too well. They all nodded in agreement and talked about other things that seriously bored Spike half to death, until he saw something that was explained but he didn't believe it, it was Shio and he was flying without wings. Back with Shio, I saw Spike looking up at me and held a finger up to my lips, signaling him to not say anything. I quickly took up into the air and slowly made my way behind the girls, ahem, ladies, how are you? They all gasped and jumped back and looked up at me, I laughed, what? never seen a flying monkey before? Twilight gulped, oh uh, well, no, actually how are you flying anyway? I told you how people, Saiyans, or anything that's learned how to, fly we use our energy, I said with a sly smile. That is so cool, Rainbow Dash said as she flew up to me. Twilight shook her head, Riite, anyway, what are you doing here, I thought you had your trials today. I landed and took off my hat and scratched my head, well, about that, it's been postponed for, god knows how long. Also, Celestia suggested I go to your town and meet some ponies. I'm guessing they suggested this so that no one would think I'm a threat. I saw Cadence and Twilight nod at this, apparently seeing the logic in it, okay, well, the girls and I were done here anyway, so you can take the train back with us, Twilight said with a smile. That's right, and I'd say wearing that suit will make a good impression on the town, although the hair could use some work. Rarity said the last part a bit more quiet, at which I just laughed at, what's so funny darling? I'm sorry, Rarity, it's just that a pureblood Saiyan's hair can't be cut or styled, we have the same hairstyle from the day we're born to the day we die. I say with a light-hearted chuckle. She gasped way more dramatically than even P.Y. could, which is an achievement in my book. Oh that is dreadful, I can't even imagine what one would do if they were stuck with an unruly mane, or hairstyle, in your case. I smiled. You saw Goku's hairstyle correct? Well that's the worst that I've seen, even though apparently his brother just has a D of long hair, kind of like the Super Saiyan 3 photo you saw except longer and black. Oh that is dreadful, I could, she was cut off as Pinky gasped extremely loud, oh I could throw you a welcome to Ponyville party and invite every pony there, oh this is going to be fun fun fun. Cadence then spoke up, well, it was good seeing you all again, and it was nice to meet you to Shio. I hope you have a fun time. With that she stood up and walked to a deeper part of the castle. Twilight looked at a scroll of paper and sighed, well we better get going if we're to make good time. You guys go on ahead and don't wait for me at the train station, I'll meet you all at Ponyville. I said looking towards the throne room. But you don't even know where Ponyville is how would you even, she began. Don't worry about it, I'll be able to find you, just take my word for it, now if you will excuse me. I started walking off when I heard the sound of feet behind me, I looked down and saw Spike looking up at me. I looked at Twilight who looked worried, don't worry, I'll watch him, you go ahead and go. She nodded and she and the girls started to walk away. I looked down at Spike, so, would you like to sit on my shoulder? He nodded, and I'll admit even though he was a dragon, it was strangely adorable. So, I picked him up and set him on my shoulder. So, where are we going? He asked. To the throne room was all I said. Oh, well how will you be able to find the girls? He asked. You'll see, and it will be awesome, I said with a chuckle. And so he asked me a surprising amount of questions in the short walk that it took to reach the throne room. 
We even somehow managed to break out into telling stories and by the time we reached the throne room, we'll. So then Twilight cast a spell on the doll to make any pony who looked at it go crazy over it, and every pony in the entire town saw it except for me. It was pretty funny when everything died down, he said laughing, he almost fell off my shoulder for the fourth time from laughing too hard. Hell, even I was laughing pretty hard. Man, Twilight seems to get into a lot of trouble, but we're here and there is the princess I need to talk to. Oh Luna, I called out in a sing-song voice. Hum. She turned her head to see who it was, when she saw me, she blushed deeply, cute. Do you need anything Shio? I clapped slowly, no, it's just that you are a sly dog you know that? You made me wear the suit, not to meet Cadence, but so that the ponies wouldn't be as scared of me. Luna had the biggest troll face I've seen on anything, ever, ma a b, she said with a giggle. I waved it off, yeah, yeah, anyway while I'm out can you check on Luna for me? Luna raised an eyebrow, Runa? I nod, yes, it's short for Whittle Moon Luna. And then I had the biggest shit eating, troll faced grin. She gave me a deadpan stare, cute. Spike burst out laughing and I had to catch him from falling. Then I started to laugh and shortly after Luna joined in. A few minutes later we calmed down and Spike was back on my shoulder. Luna took a deep breath and composed herself, yes, I shall check on Luna, now don't you have somewhere to be? I nodded, yeah, the girl's train has stopped moving so it's time for me to go, I'll see you later. I walked out the throne room when Spike asked me how I could tell the train stopped. Well I found out that magic is very similar to Key, and Twilight has the strongest aura out of all of them so I just tracked her. I put the fingers to my forehead and closed my eyes, got ya. Okay Spike hold on tight. Wait, W, with the girls, hi. He looked around and saw the girls who were staring at them wide-eyed, whoa, what was that? I chuckled at that, that my dear young dragon is a technique called instant transmission, I lock onto a target's key, or in Twilight's case, magic, and well I will myself to that exact area they're at. Oh, so it's like teleportation, Twilight said enthusiastically. I shake my head, not exactly, teleportation means you can transport on thing to a seen area somewhere else. Instant transmission can only transport something if it has a key or magic source to lock onto to without it, it just scans the area until it finds a source to lock onto. Rainbow huffed, okay eggheads, let's get this show on the road, I need to catch up on my napping. She flew behind me and started pushing me forward. Well Ponyville, here I come. As I was taking in the sights around Ponyville a song popped into my head and I couldn't help but start to hum it. Uh, dude, what are you humming? It sounds catchy. Rainbow Dash said. Huh, oh it's just a short little song that played on a commercial, I said with a small grin. What's a commercial? Fluttershy asked. Well a commercial is a type of ad on TV. They all had raised eyebrows except for Pinky who was just giggling madly. Oh wow, I just realized we really don't know too much about each other or our worlds do we? I scratched my head and stared at the clouds when an extremely loud growling sound came from my stomach. Fluttershy eat, and crouched down and hid behind her mane, w what was that? I pat her head, that was my stomach saying it's time for lunch. Nothing to worry about, Sue where can we go for lunch, where ponies won't stare at me, I might add. Oh, did I forget to mention that? Well yeah, most and not all the ponies in the town were staring at me like they've never seen a person before, oh wait, they haven't. So, needless to say everyone, er, Every pony was staring at me like I was the best thing since Dragon Balls. Well, except for one mint green pony that had a harp for a cutie mark, she had the widest smile I've ever seen on a creature, and I swear she was stalking us. Uh, Shio, Shio, darling are you paying attention? Rarity asked. I shook my head to clear my thoughts, huh, oh, sorry just thinking but what were we talking about? Pinky giggled, interrupting Rarity as she was about to talk. Well duh silly we were wondering where you would like to eat. Personally, I would choose Sugarcube Corner, but that might just be because I work and live there, but we do make super duper fantastic cupcakes, cakes, pies, muffins, cookies mph 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 mph. Pinky just kept on talking though her mouth was being covered by Applejack's hoof. What Pinky here is saying is that there are a few places you can eat but ah do agree that Sugarcube Corner would be the best. Not many ponies there would mess with ya if and your pinky's friend. 
Applejack smiled with the rest nodding behind her. I gave it a split second of thought, yeah, why not, just the name sounds sweet and I need some sugar right now. Yippee. I'll go tell the cakes, and with that Pinky ran off in the blink of an eye. I couldn't help but smile, I swear if I didn't see her run off just now I would have thought that she could use instant transmission. Rainbow walked past me rolling her eyes, honestly, knowing Pinky she probably does, well let's go I'm starving and I need to eat to keep all of this awesome going. The rest of the girls made a noise that was something between a groan and a laugh, Spike just snorted, and they followed after Rainbow, all except for Fluttershy who just stayed behind. The only reason I noticed is because my mind started to wander on the thought that, that crazy pink mare had the ability to teleport, anyway Fluttershy. Hey, what are you doing back here? I asked. She looked up at me after a few seconds of silence, oh, I'm just thinking. About? I asked with a raised eyebrow. She blushes and her ears fold back quickly, and nothing. I look in the direction she's staring at, oh, I see, well your secret is safe with me. I give her my best award-winning smile. W was it that easy to see? She asks worriedly. Oh not really, I've just been good at noticing things like that, oh hey, I heard you like animals right? She nods sheepishly, why yes I do, how did you know? If you don't mind me asking. Luna told me in a letter she gave me this morning, come you've never seen a nocturne cat have you? I had sly smile on my face at this point, she shook her head no. Well, do you have anything that looks like a starry night sky? She shook her head no, again, sorry, but rarity might she sometimes carries around fabrics just in case of fashion emergencies. I looked at here incredulously, you can't be serious she holds onto fabric in case of, fashion emergencies, oh okay why 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 then, well if she has some fabric like that with her right now we should probably catch up. I looked around and gulped, only problem is that I lost the way they went, you do know the way to the place right? Yes, I do but I thought you could sense magic or what was it that you have inside of you? Keys? She asked politely. Key, and I can but I only do so when I'm in battle or I feel like showing off, also sensing key takes a small amount of energy to use so I can't use it continuously, I said matter of factly. Oh, okay, well follow me, it's only five minutes away from here. She started to walk away and I quickly followed. After a few minutes we arrived at a gingerbread house, I'm not even playing. We arrived at a giant gingerbread house, how is that even structurally safe? Could you wait out here for a minute or two, I'll let you know when you can come in I just want to make sure that everypony is ready for you. I if that's okay with you that is. I nodded, yeah it's fine, just call me in when ready. Okay. I will. She walked into the building and closed the door behind her. After a few minutes of waiting and whistling the little tune I was humming earlier Fluttershy popped her head out the doorway and motioned for me to come in. When I walked into the building it was pitch black, I could sense the girls and Spike, as well as a lot of other energies, but I just assumed that they were traces left from ponies coming in and out of here each day, it is a food place after all. But that was shot down as soon as the lights turned on and I was greeted with a huge, surprise. Which died off quickly except for well, the girls and Spike as expected. I laughed nervously and gave a small wave, you'd think that someone who's incredibly strong wouldn't get nervous huh? Yeah ha, huh? no, uh, hello. I said the only response I got was a cough from the crowd. I looked down at the floor and just shuffled a bit until I heard a very familiar, very loud voice speak up. Hey, I thought this was a welcome party, not a stare at she me party. S O O O, let's get this party started right. And with that there were shouts of agreement and then music started to play, with a very familiar song starting it off, but remixed. It sounded way too much like club music for my taste but whatever I can't complain it was catchy. Watch? V equals 8 8 to 7 cm 2 njgi walked over to Pinky. How did you even get this song? Realizing what it was. What do you mean silly? That song is from Bruno Mares, remixed by my friend Vinyl Scratch, or DJ Pond 3 if you prefer her stage name, but go enjoy the party, you are the guest of honor and what sort of party is it if the guest of honor isn't having fun? she said with the largest grin I've seen on her yet. Oh, wait also where did you learn what knee, meant? I asked. I have no idea what it means it just sounds funny to put it with your name, like Fleewee, or Kiki, or Sihi, or, I wrapped my hand around her mouth before she could talk my ear off. Okay, okay I get it, 
You thought it sounded funny, well thank you for throwing the party. Even though you only had 5 minutes to do so, I scratched the back of my neck, I still have no idea how she did it. Well, have fun partying Shio, I have to go make some more cupcakes, looks like we're running out. Oh also, I'd suggest you start training again, oops, I'll pretend like you didn't hear that, okay? He'd kill me if he found out I said that, she said with a nervous smile. Who are you talking about? Can't say, gotta go cook, have fun, she finished in a sing-song voiced and dashed into the kitchen. What in the world was that about? I started to walk around the party a bit and I saw ponies of all shapes sizes and colors. Actually that's something I didn't really notice until now, why? I have no idea, maybe I was just too caught up in everything else, but this world had a very cartoon-like feel to it. I swear I could even see faint outlines on the townsfolk. How weird must be my imagine. Hey Shio, and there goes my ear. I looked for the source of the voice that yelled my name and saw that Twilight was standing next to me with Rarity in a tan mare with a grey and white mane and tail with a rolled up piece of parchment tied with a blue ribbon. Also, she was wearing small reading glasses and what looked like a detachable collar made just to be a collar, like on a dress shirt, and a weird puffy looking tie thing, I have no idea what it's called, I still don't never cared to ask. I smiled, hey Twilight, Rarity, what's up? Oh we just like you to meet the mayor of our little town, Ms. Mayor Mare. Twilight introduced politely. Pleasure to meet you Ms. Mayor Mare, M's mayor is fine, my friend, she said with a curt smile. Uh, oops, my apologies, I tend to forget that my name is well the same in terms of sound, it's the mayor that's spelled M-A-Y-O-R. Ah, well, it's a pleasure to meet you Ms. Mayor, my name is well Shio, as you could probably tell. I paused for a slight chuckle. May I ask what I owe the pleasure of meeting you as though? Twilight coughed, gaining my attention, well that was actually my fault, well you see considering how every pony reacted when you came in I thought that maybe holding a large Q and A with the whole town would be a good thing since they could ask you any questions for themselves. I gave that thought for a few seconds and nodded in agreement, well it's a good idea, just let me know the time and date. But that still leaves the question as to why Rarity is here. I mean I have no problems with friends hanging out with friends but I have a feeling you wanted to talk to the mayor and I about something? She blushed in embarrassment, well that is true darling. We're having a rather large group of minotaur coming to our town for a wrestling competition, and she was wondering if I could handle making clothes for them, so I wanted her to meet you. Why would you want her to meet me, I don't see how I factor in too. Then it all snapped into place, so you're the one who made all of my outfits for me? No, not all of them darling just some of the casual ones, that suit, and I repaired the clothes you came in as well, because they were a bit torn up, actually I have been meaning to ask how that happened. I laughed, ah, that's because well you know how I said before being transported here by whatever I was sparring with my brother, clothes tend to get very torn up in those sessions, generally I have to buy or go to Chi Chi or someone to have my clothes make, honestly though, Chi Chi makes them the best. Anyway. Thank you for the clothes though I'm glad to see you made my casual clothes very similar to how you I normally have them. Her face went into a deeper shad of red, she obviously loved the praise, yes, after seeing the pictures of your mentors and friends and family I couldn't help but try my hand at some of those designs, they were a marvel to make and very tedious. I even had to restart on a few especially. Ahem. Well not to interrupt but I see that you can clearly handle making the clothes for the minotaur. It was a pleasure to meet you mister? Funnily enough I don't have a laster, technically, a second name for that matter so just call me Shio. I gave her a warm smile. Right, it was a pleasure to meet you Mr. Shio. I hope that we can chat further in the future but as for now I see a pastry calling my name, oh and Ms. Sparkle. Just inform me when the time and date for the Q&A is at the end of the party, and have fun. And with that she made her way to the snack table. She's a nice mayor, I wouldn't mind staying in this town but I already have a place in the castle unfortunately. True it would be nice to have you live in our quaint little town with us, but I assume that since you will be starting to work in the military soon you need to stay close to the castle. Rarity then gave off a dejected sigh, it would have been nice though to make outfits for you every day, can't change what's done, well ta ta off to party. How well I guess that just leaves me and you twilight, twilight? Nowhere to be seen, well that's just fan fugging tastic. HMPH. Well let's get this party started the earthling, say in way. After my shout of getting a party started the only way I know how, let's just say shit hit the fan but instead of shit, 
It was chocolate, delicious, yummy chocolate. So in other words I danced like a fool to some of the craziest and most awesome songs watch. Versus equals BNNQ5907 AKM this being one, which is still surprising that they even had it here but apparently they had a lot of the same artists just ponified. I talked to a few ponies whose names I can barely remember, they were and I might get a few wrong here. Big Mac, Applejack's brother, Ditsy Hooves, but everyone just calls her Derpy, Roselick and her little gang of friends, who unsurprisingly also had names after flowers. Vinyl, who was the DJ, and of course I remembered that Pinky mentioned her earlier, and I also met Applejack's little sister Apple Bloom and her friends Sweetie Belle, Rarity's younger sister, and Scootaloo, who's Rainbow's biggest fan. And the real party didn't start until they had to go to sleep. But after all that it was getting very close to midnight and the party was dying down. Alright everypony, according to the main party mayor herself the party has to end, it was great being here and let's give it up to our crazy party alien shiooo, vinyl shouted out. I honestly did not suspect to get the round of applause that I got, but it was earth shaking, literally because how ponies clap is that they stomp their hooves on the ground. Thank you. Thank you but I'm glad I got such a warm welcome from you, I never would have expected it considering I'm what I am, but I was wrong so I would like to thank you all for a great night. I was about to walk off stage before being stopped by Applejack who whispered something in my ear. I turned back to the crowd, ahem, before you all though I was just informed that a Q&A will be held about me tomorrow at about 10am if you have any questions regarding it ask Twilight, when she wakes up because she passed out, anyway have a good night every pony. And with that I walked off stage. Yo, AJ, when Twilight wakes up tell her I went back to the castle and I'll be on time for the Q&A tomorrow, have a good night. I said to her with a slight nod. She nodded back, alright, see ya tomorrow. So I left the party and started to walk to the castle, why walk? Because I have a plan for tomorrow, but after a minute I got too tired and decided to IT, instant transmission, to the castle. Hum seems the closest person to my room is Celestia, alright let's go, and I was gone in a flash. When I appeared next to Celestia though well let's just say she jumped 5 feet into the air and I fell to the ground in laughter. Oh oh god, th that was, awesome. When she calmed down I was given a very stern death glare. What was that for, and it's not funny so stop laughing this instant, still glaring she was. I didn't mean to scare you it's just I didn't want to walk through the castle and you were the closest to my room. I said matter of factly, I was still on the floor, didn't feel like getting up. What does that have to do with anything? She asked with a raised eyebrow. I stood up slowly, remind me to inform you off all of my abilities tomorrow or maybe Twilight can, she sends you letters right. Well she's heading a town Q&A about me tomorrow, anyway you look tired, I'll see you later, good night. I walked past her to my room waving her good night. I flopped on my bed and promptly heard a high pitched meow and a new weight on my stomach. It didn't take long for me to figure out what and who it was. Hey Wuna, how are? Crap that's what I forgot oh well I'll have to do it tomorrow. I said as I scratched behind her ear. Do what tomorrow? Said a very familiar voice. I looked over towards my window, hey, Luna, just the princess I wanted to see. She giggled, ah. Well you are the Saiyan I wanted to see. I rolled my eyes, I'm the only Saiyan here princess, anyway, you wanna hear bout my day in Ponyville? She sat down at the foot of my bed, I'd love to. I smiled, alright well here's what happened, so I recounted the day's events and confirmed that nocturne cats could travel through anything that resembles the night sky which lead to a very interesting conversation about Luna's cutie mark and mane. Then I got to the end of my story and then Twilight drank too much and passed out right on top of a brown pony with a shaggy darker brown mane, who I later learned is called Dr. Woos, anyway Twilight passed out from over drinking and the funny part is she only had two drinks. Luna was laughing extremely hard at this point, so I let her calm down before continuing. That mare cannot handle alcohol can she? She asked. I shook my head, obviously not, but at that point Pinky decided to call it quits with the party and well here I am now. Actually you know I never actually was able to sing the song I was humming and I really wanted to. Well you could sing it for me, if you would like to. Her face was red, which I found an accomplishment because since her coat is a deep blue. You know what, I would actually like to, give me a second to get it going in my head, ok so the setting is two humans are in space looking down at the earth, here we go. It never gets old, huh? 
I took a big breath, now I'm done, but yeah it's describing everything that's to love in my world, what different people are passionate about and walking through Ponyville reminded me of that, everyone was doing what they loved and it was a nice sight, you don't see much of that in my world, I let out a large yawn, which is strange because I'm usually a night person, guess I had a long day. I was sitting in sugar cube corner, right, uh, wait I've never been to rainbows do you think you could lead me to there? Of course silly willy, I need to talk to Dashy too, Pinky said happily. Oh huh, well, thanks Pinky, I can wait until you get off work if you'd like. We can go now, the cakes won't mind it's slow anyway. Are you sure? I asked, not wanting to stop her from working. Yep yep, just let me go tell the cakes. She bounced away and came back a few seconds later. Okie dokie Loki, we can go now. Sweet, yeah just let me finish this cupcake. I popped the last bit of the chocolate cupcake into my mouth, it was my fourth one and I'll admit this. Even if Pinky is one crazy mare she knows how to make a damn good cupcake, even though I will miss meat. I stood up and stretched, cracking my knuckles and back, oh yeah, that's the stuff. Okay lead the way oh mighty pink one. And off we went to an adventure worthy of Goku, not, it took about 10 minutes to reach her house, which is as outrageous as Pinky's since Rainbow's was a friggin' cloud palace. Whoa, talk about grand and a bit egocentric, it is a nice house though. Well that's Rainbow for you she's the best at outdoing things, but how are you going to talk to her all the way up there she's generally asleep at this time, considering it's about 8.15 and she sleeps until like 2 in the afternoon on most days and doesn't like being woken up at all. Also you can't stand on clouds. She said all that in one breath, huggo figure. Pinky, you know I can fly, can I stand on clouds? Here I have no idea, maybe, but I don't need to so give me minute and I'll be right back. I started to rise slowly off the ground to her house when Pinky called after me. When you are done tell Dashi to come talk to me okay? No problem, I can do that. After I got up to her door I knocked on it for a bit but it just swung open with no answer, so I wandered in and when I did I heard snoring coming from upstairs. I followed the sound to a sleeping rainbow maned Pegasus and proceeded to shake her softly. When she didn't wake up, I shook her a bit harder and, well she woke up but I got a face full of hoof, not that it hurt but still it was surprising. Whoa sorry man, I didn't hurt you did I? She asked after the shock of me shaking her awake wore off. I removed her hoof from my face, peeved, I've had much harder hits dealt to me, don't worry about it, but I want you to help me pull a prank. I had a very evil grin on my face. She returned the grin, go on, I love a good prank. Okay so here is what I had in mind, we talked for about 15 minutes of the prank before we got all the details straight. Alright, so we all clear, good and I'll see you at 10 then, also Pinky wants to talk to you she's down on the ground, but I'm not going to stay I have to go head to see Twilight. Could you point me in the direction where she lives? Yeah, sure go southwest from here and you should eventually see a library, she lives there, and that's an evil prank worthy of the great rainbow dash, she said proudly. Haha, <laughs> right well I'll see you later. I floated back down through the cloud house and landed on the ground next to Pinky. Well, she'll be down in a minute or so, but I'm heading off to Twilight's. I'll see you later Pinky. Okay have fun she me. She waved me off and waited for rainbow and by waiting I mean looking around like she was looking at a fly. So after about 30 minutes of walking I finally made it to the library and knocked on the door to which a little purple and green dragon answered. Hey Spike! I held out my fist. He looked at it with a raised eyebrow, uh, what are you doing? It's called a fist bump, it's what guy friends do when they greet each other, I said. Oh, he balled up his hand into a fist and bumped mine, so what brings you here? Oh I needed to talk to Twilight about the town queue and a in an hour, is she around? Uh, yeah she's in the kitchen. Hey, Twee, Shio is here to talk to you about the queue and a, he yelled out. After a few seconds Twilight came walking out a bit slower than usual, she was obviously hung over from last night. I snickered, hey champ how are you doing? She groaned and blinked slowly, I'm not going to lie, I've been worse, but what did you want to talk about? Alright well. For the Q and A I also wanted to show off my powers as well and I wanted to see if you could help me with that. I said as I twiddled my thumbs, thinking she was going to decline. Quite the opposite happened actually, she instantly perked up and had a very crazy excited spark in her eye, I think that's a great idea, I can learn all about how strong you are, what you can do, 
and everything else, so what did you have in mind? Hey, glad to know you're interested but can we talk inside? My feet kind of hurt. Oh, how rude of me. Yes yes come in and tell me what you want to do. Spike can you make us some? She paused and looked at me for my option. Uh honestly water would be fine. I said quickly sitting down on the floor since the chairs were too small for me. Right so this is what I had in mind, I started right as Spike brought my water out, thanks, hey you want to help contribute to our ideas? Spike looked up at Twilight asking for approval, she nodded. Cool okay so this is what I thought, we talked for a while and right as we ended we had about 10 minutes before the town wide meeting would take place, so we quickly made our way outside town hall since well it provided more space to show off my abilities. We actually showed up last even though we were 5 minutes early. Mayor Mare greeted us and well she did the opening announcement, Phillies and Gentlicolts today we hold a Q&A for a very special guest, Mr. Shio. I got a round of applause as I entered onto stage, they obviously remembered me from last night, hey, everyone how are ya? Good, good, well as you all know my name is Shio other than that you know very little about me at all, so let's get some questions started. A wave of hooves went up into the air, yes you. The a mint green pony with the mint green and white striped mane. My name is Lyra and are you a human? She asked way to over enthusiastically and the entire crowd groaned. Haha, no I'm not a human but I closely resemble them, he really only differentiating factor in terms of looks are well all Saiyans, being a pure blood Saiyan like me or any mixed breed is born with a tail, I say. Oh, thanks, wait you said you have a tail but I don't see it, she said looking confused. Right. Well it's wrapped around my waist, see, I unwrapped it from around me and let it wave back and forward by itself, god it feels good to not have it wrapped around me, and there is a reason why I keep it wrapped around me. Oh okay, thank you Mr. Saiyan, she said with a bright smile. You're welcome and you can call me Shio, next question please, ah uh, yes, the colt in the back with the blue coat and the brown mane. My name is Snails, sir and my question is why do you keep your tail wrapped around you? The young colt named snails asked ah good question would you like to come up here for a demonstration i asked slightly enthusiastic god this is gonna suck he nodded and quickly ran up stage okay so i want you to grab my tail when i tell you to but not too hard he nodded okay i can do that i smirked good okay on three one two three grab he grabbed and i went down like a rock and he instantly let go w what just happened he stammered out i'm sorry i didn't mean to hurt you i stood up slowly and patted his back don't worry about it that was supposed to happen i got a voice from the crowd that asked what do you mean well you see a saiyan's tail is the source of our greatest power which i hope you never come to see but at the same time is our greatest weakness if anything were to grab it i would be weaker than a newborn baby okay you can go snails more hooves shot up and I choose a large white pegasus, a very large white pegasus who shouted out, yeah, when I called on him. The name's Snowflake, I had to suppress a giggle. You said you become as weak as a newborn foal, but to no offense when I say this but you don't look too strong oh begin with so my question was. I cut him off, how strong am I? Yeah I figured as much do you want me to answer honestly. He nodded, huh right. Well the greatest feat of strength I've pulled of was lift a house up, but since I'm actually as strong as one of my greatest heroes was a long time ago I'd say I could punch a mountain and it would shatter, and that's physical strength. He audibly gulped, you, you mean you have more than just physical strength. I smiled a soft but wicked smile, yes I do, I have an energy inside of me called Ki, it's very similar to magic but it seems to be a lot more battle based, Ki and key can be measured by power level even all of you have power levels of magic I can feel it easily, and next to me twilight has the highest power level in the area. Now I know you want to know what my power level is and I'll tell you at max power it's 120 million, I can hold it back though right now I'm only putting out around 10,000 and that's not too much. The audience gasped at the number and I let a chuckle slip through at which they went silent too, hey, sorry that I laughed but I'm still one of the weakest heroes on my planet. Anyway to put my power into retrospect, if I was at max power I could easily destroy a planet without blinking, but I would never do that, because I'm a good guy. The crowd was silent and I just rubbed the back of my head before a hoof, 
which belonged to a mayor with a white mine and an outfit that was black and white striped and wearing glasses with what I could say had the biggest model agent vibe I've ever seen, shot up. Um yes you, Ms. Um, I trailed off. Photo finish, the greatest photographer in all of Equestria, darling and I just have to know what is that outfit you are wearing and who designed it, it is fabulous. She said with so much oomph I could feel the fabulousness just radiating off of it. I heard Rarity squeal in the back and Fluttershy say, oh my, very quietly right after. Those two obviously had past dealings with her. Ah yes this outfit I'm wearing is called a GI. It is the training outfit that I used from my home and it's very light fitting and easy to move and fight in, and the mare that made it is Ponyville's number one designer and fashionista. Rarity, so if you want to talk to her about it, she's in the back. Thank you darling, you will have to let me see you wear some of your other outfits, she said before heading backstage. Well that was fun, any other questions? I asked. A filly, which I recognized as Scootaloo, yes Scootaloo? What is that symbol on the front of your outfit? Is that your cutie mark? She asked, and I noticed her, Sweetie Belle, and Apple Bloom were listening intently for an answer. Before I could answer though a pink filly spoke up first, of course he doesn't you cutie mark failures. He isn't a pony, duh. She got a few of the other fillies and colts to laugh at that. I spoke up, stopping them from speaking, now that wasn't nice yet you weren't entirely wrong young filly. To answer your question Scootaloo, no it is not a cutie mark, from what I understand a cutie mark is what ponies get when they find their special talent correct. She nodded. Okay, right but it might as well be my cutie mark. This symbol is the names of my mentors, Goku and Vegeta. It is the symbol that means I have taken on both of their fighting styles and adapted it to my own, so technically it is my cutie mark in its own way. After that I got questions for the next hour or so, they consisted of how old are you, 19, I'm 19 if haven't said it yet. What did you do as a job? How was life growing up as a child? All that good stuff and when the questions ended the mayor came out to end the queue and a boot, hold on Ms. Mayor, I actually wanted to have a showcase of my abilities. I. I guess we can do that, it would be interesting to watch. Would you agree everypony? She asked to the crowd. They all cheered a loud yes. Well I guess that settles that, she said with a slight chuckle. I smiled a toothy smile, so is there anywhere that is kind of barren and well dead that no one cares about getting destroyed? Twilight spoke up at this point, well there is ghastly gorge, we could go there. Good, that'll do, you lead they way, I said with a bow and so she did well all made our way to ghastly gorge, everypony was seated on bleachers a long ways away from any treacherous areas. I tapped the microphone and spoke loudly into it, ok so for this demonstration twilight and rarity are going to set up some strong magical targets while applejack and pinkie pie are going to set up hard to destroy targets, rainbow will be putting up targets at high speed sand then throwing balls at me at the highest speed, and miss shy will be here just in case anypony gets accidentally injured. We waited for them to set up the targets and in that time I meditated and got ready to show off. When all the targets were set up I walked back up to the mic, ok so I want to do a vote, for those of you who want to see the hard physical challenge raise your hooves, and just about every one of them did. Hey, well then that's that ok, so I'm going to hand the mic off to Applejack and Pinky, since they know these targets the best. I handed the mic off to the two and walked up to the first target. Well now. This target is a very sturdy one but it's one any pony can break, don't you agree Applejack? Applejack? Pinky looked around for her but she was selling some of her treats so she looked to Spike, hey, Spike, do you want to co-commentate with me again? Sure. So Shio has stepped up to the first one and it seems like he is testing out how strong this target is, Spike said. I tapped it lightly with the back of my knuckle and then pulled my fist back delivering a strong and fast blow, instantly breaking it into pieces. Wow that was fast, it crumbled like really soft cake, Pinky said. That it did Pinky, now let's see how he takes this next one. It's around 20x sturdier than the last one and only strong earth ponies can break this one, Spike replied. I walked up to the second one and tested it as well and delivered a stronger blow to that one it took a second but it cracked and fell apart. I got ooze from the crowd. Wow that was incredible that's hard for even some earth ponies. But this next one is the strongest, not even AJ and Big Mac can break this even with a combined kick, Pinky said, amazed. I'll say I hear that even some teenage dragons have trouble breaking this material. Spike said to back up her claim. 
Just from looking at this one I knew I was going to have to use my hardest punch to destroy it. Okay let's go, Giga Fist. I shouted as I sent a slower punch to it. And no it wasn't a key filled punch. Well technically any punch is a key filled punch but it wasn't a special key attack say like Dragon Fist it was more like Meteor Smash. Anyway at first it seemed like the stone did nothing and the crowd was murmuring. Huh, it does seem like he didn't do anything to it, oh well better luck next time. Pinky said sympathetically. Aw oh man I was sure he'd be able to. Wait hold on it looks like, is it? Spike was staring intently at the target. I turned around at this point and walked away and as soon as I smirked it exploded into at least a thousand pieces. The crowd was silent. W wow, it just exploded. That's impressive, Pinky said. Spike's voice was shaky, he. He's even, stro stronger than some dragons. I walked up to Spike and Pinky and asked for the microphone. Thank you everyone also pick up your jaws so I can hear the loudest shout for the next challenge, magic? I loud cheer, or speed? A roar. Speed it is, Pinky. Spike here you go since Rainbow is going to be a bit busy actually throwing the targets I need someone to commentate. Yeah, we can do this too, right Pinky? Spike said with a confident smile. Of course we can Spikey, we are the best team right? She asked happily. Spike blushed. Why yeah of course we are. I smiled and walked towards Dash, but stopped a little while away, you ready Rainbow? She laughed eyely, of course, let's see if you are though. Start throwing and let's see. I said doing the classic, bring it, hand gesture. Oh, intense let's see how this goes. Spike said. Do you want some popcorn? Pinky asked. Spike nodded and took a handful. Dash threw several targets at me at somewhat fast speeds, each of which I destroyed no problem, come on rainbow, faster. She grunted and threw them even faster, it took me a bit longer to react to these but I got them, and it slowly increased until the last 15, I'd say. Come on Dash, give me your faster throws. The crowd and commentators, ood. Fine you want fast I'll give you fast, she spun around creating a rainbow tornado that sent the rest out at supersonic speeds. I'm not going to lie I was nervous I wasn't going to hit them but then I increased my power level a little bit higher, without anyone noticing and caught each one, not destroyed but caught, when it was over Dash was panting but saw that I caught them so she flew at me and started throwing punches. Each one I dodged with ease and caught her last punch, very good thanks for the demonstration. I said with a sly smile. Rainbow nodded and sat down to get some rest, while the crowd cheered me on. When I walked over to the magic challenge Spike ran up and gave me the mic, thanks bud, okay so this is the last challenge of the day the magic key challenge and I can't use any physical attacks or else I'll just pass through them. So without further ado, you new commentators, Twilight and Rarity. I walked towards the field of the targets and looked around, there were around 30 targets all in varying shapes and sizes and I was told by Twilight when we were making up this little demonstration that the last one would appear when the rest were destroyed. Hell hello, is this thing on? Twilight spoke into the mic getting a high pitched screech in response. I would take that as a yes darling, but we have to commentate on this little show. Said Rarity after rubbing her ears a little bit. I snickered, so are we ready to get this started or are there any calculations that need to be done for Twilight? Because in this I am going to be using quite a bit of my key. Actually, I was thinking if you could explain what each, technique, move, ability, etc is and how much power you have to use to pull it off, if that isn't too much. She said while pulling out a notebook and quill. Right so I guess I'll get started. Uh actually before I start I'll explain this, from what I've seen from Rarity, Twilight, Luna, Celestia, even Blue Blood and any other unicorn that magic has its own color specific to the unicorn, correct? I asked both Twilight and Rarity. Twilight nodded, that is correct, my magical aura is a light purple as you can see from me levitating the microphone. Then the mic was engulfed in a sky blue aura that was coming from Rarity's horn and mine is this wonderful shade of blue. Okay, so the same can technically said about key, it just depends on your affiliation to good or evil and or your species. Take Saiyans for example a good Saiyan has a blue white aura while an evil Saiyan has a dark purple red aura. Sometimes, though a Saiyan no matter what they are aligned with will have a different colored aura, there are only two cases that I know of. One is the legendary Super Saiyan Brawly he has an eerie green aura that forms into a sphere around him and the other, I was cut off by twilight. The other is you correct, 
she asked. I nodded, correct and my color is a nice mixture of red and black, that's why my training GI is the same color as it, anyway let's get this started. I formed my index finger and thumb in classic gun pose and fired off five small pure black key blasts that had a red hue surrounding them towards five of the smaller targets, having them explode into sparks of red, black, blue, and purple. Five down, twenty-five to go. That was marvelous, you were right the red and black in the energy goes nicely together since it looks fire-like, Rarity said. Hey thanks, and Twilight for your data those were small key blasts, speed, size and amount vary on what you're trying to do, they can also paralyze if you know how to give the right property to it. Also that only takes up a very small fraction of my power to use. I said and I could hear her scribbling the data onto the notepad. Okay next ones, I took a deep breath and held both hands together in the gun position for a few seconds before I fired off a larger blast. You know something funny happens when I use large key blasts the colors go from the black with a red hue, outline to red with a black hue, outline. Anyway the first large one landed on a medium sized target and I did the same with four others. Few that was fun, used more energy than I thought though, ah, uh, I sighed and cracked my neck. Are you alright? Twilight asked. I rubbed my temples, yeah I'm good just used more energy that time, right so those are large key blasts. The same applies to those that did the smaller ones. The only difference is that they are stronger and slower and take longer to charge up, thus, using much more energy. Why the color in mine changes, no idea. Oh, and you all are about to be in a treat. I suggest that to the crowd if you have some earplugs, use them, but don't put them too far, and then you'll miss the best part. Rarity looked confused. What do you mean? Rarity, you had being messy, correct? Well, you are really going to want to move this kind of flings dirt and rocks around. Twilight you too, I don't want you hurt, I said in a stern tone. What? What are you going to do? She asked nervously. I smirked, me, I'm not going to do a thing, just back up, I don't want either of you hurt. They did as they were told and they backed up. Good now, get ready to be amazed, or horrified or whatever other emotion you can feel. I stood there with my arms crossed as my power started to increase without any visible sign yet. The crowd had very odd aisle murmurs along the lines of, why is he just standing there? And, is he thinking? Then one very astute pony saw something, wait, look at the rocks and pebbles on the ground they're starting to float. That pony shouted out, oh wow, he's right, but why are they doing that, rocks don't float by themselves. Twilight pointed out. I felt a new but familiar presence and just kept concentrating, ah that's because they aren't, said the presence. Everyone looked to the voice when Twilight spoke up, PR Princess Celestia, WH what are you doing here? She smiled warmly, not to worry my faithful student, I felt s growing power and I wanted to see what it was, now I do, it's our young friend here. Twilight nodded, yes, I felt the increase of power as well, it is similar to when a unicorn is charging a spell but it is more of a gradual increase, oh, that's what you meant by the rocks weren't levitating by themselves. Very good my student, it is our Saiyan friend that is making the rocks rise, but not through a levitation spell. Finally figured it out, good, hey, Twilight, shouldn't you inform the crowd of what's going on, you are the announcer you know. Oh oh right, well every pony who hasn't noticed, look to the rocks around his feet. The rocks that are levitating around him are not doing that by themselves, nor is he using a spell. It is something that only those with a high magic level, such as the princesses or a very gifted unicorn, can do. He is increasing his power gradually, and to which I speculate that the amount of power he is giving off is enough to counterbalance the effect of gravity in the specific area. She explained. Well that's more or less the gist of it so enough of the talkie talkie and the baby stuff. Let me show you just what I'm really made of. My facial features hardened into a slight scowl as I began to increase my power even further since at this point it was around 10 million. 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 50 million, at this point my aura was starting to flicker into existence but not fully as I stopped it at 60 million, causing all of the rocks and chunks of dirt that were sent flying suddenly dropped straight down. I stretched and cracked my neck, alright, so right now my power level is at 60 million, which is half of my maximum strength. Now why I raised my power level is simple. What I'm about to do requires tremendous amounts of my energy and halfway is where I can use all of what I need to do without charging some more. And what exactly do you need to do? Twilight asked. 
Well thanks to you and Rarity these next targets are incredibly strong, so I need to use my super attacks. Now I bet you're wondering, what's a super attack? Well super attacks are some of the Z fighters, which are our group of heroes on our world, strongest moves. Now anyone can use a number of super attacks but only 4 can be mastered at a time, why? I have no idea that's just how it works, same thing goes for special attacks which can take the place of a super attack but I'll get into those later. Everyone where I'm from has their own signature super attack that can be taught to their disciples and since I was trained by two people I took on two signature moves and I actually don't have my own signature move. I paused to catch my breath. Just do something cool already. Sumpony yelled out. I let out a frustrated growl, look, if you don't be patient I'll show you something cool right in your face. I said scarily calm like, which got him to sit down and shut up. Good, now, as I was saying, anyone who saw me that first night I appeared will recognize the beginning stage of this move. I put the butt of my hands together and then drew the to my side, changing my hand position to where it looked like I was squishing an invisible ball. I started to do the chant, ka, me, ha, me. At this point a medium sized sky blue ball of energy formed in between my hands. Oh yeah I remember that, it's that same really pretty bright blue sparkly super duper ball he had in his hands when he first got here, Pinky randomly blurted out. It truly is a wonderful thing to look at, but he did say that it was attack, correct? Rarity asked. Yeah, he did. Applejack replied. That's a shame to have something that fabulous being used for fighting. Ha. Huh. I yelled out as I pushed my hands forward sending the beam forward towards the targets. It hit one target and the explosion expanded wide enough to destroy 10 of the remaining targets. I put my hands down and looked at the ground, looking back up a split second later, haha, that was fun, so that was my mentor, Goku's signature move, the Kamehameha wave. Now since that does tire me out some I'll show off a weaker super attack while I recharge some. It is called the super energy volley attack i could go on explaining what it does but i'll just demonstrate seeing as you all seem to like destruction so much i got a wave of cheers to which i just shook my head at i closed my eyes took a deep breath and then shot off hundreds of gigantic key blasts towards the targets as they build up i stopped firing them out and when the last one hit the all exploded at once destroying at least five more targets woo boy that was tiring i haven't used that move in forever but yeah that was super volley attack. But now for a technical, super attack, it's really a special attack but it still takes a good chunk of energy to do. It is called solar flare. I gave Celestia a little look to which she just returned with a raised eyebrow. Oh don't give me that look, I would not even use a move that cause a burst of harmful radioactive solar energy around so many innocents. No it's more of a blinding move that lasts about 10 seconds, like this, solar flare. I put my hands to my face as I closed my eyes causing a flash of blinding white light. When I opened my eyes I saw Celestia still staring at me. That was a cruel joke, she said with a small smile. I shrugged, hey I take him where I can get him and besides it should be wearing off in about 3.2.1. About 5 seconds after that I was hit in the arm by AJ. Now, that was just plain mean, why'd ya have ta go and do that? She asked giving me a fierce glare. You mean other than the fact that I thought it'd be hilarious? Well because a few if not every single one of you would have closed your eyes if I warned you, thus defeating the purpose of demonstrating the move. I explained. She huffed, fine, but just don't do again ya here, or ah uh, might just have ta buck ya into next week, she finished jokingly. I gave her a sly smile, understood, now go on back to the bleachers. Alright everyone it's time for my last super attack. This attack is the signature move of my other mentor, the prince, technically king considering he is married, of all nine living Saiyans be they full-blooded or not, Prince Vegeta. Well at least he believes he's a prince. Anywho, this attack is called Gaelic Gun. I set out into the crowd but more to twilight. And no I did not say Garlic Gun, friggin' hungry ponies. I said quickly, gaining a few, awes, from the crowd. I shall say this now. This does have similar hand movements to the Kamehameha wave, but they are very different attacks. Some even say that they were made to be destined to be each other's opposites, so without further ado. I put the butt of my hands together and brought them back bringing my outer knuckles together. Now, you see the thing I really like about the Gaelic gun is that, while it may be weaker than the Kamehameha wave, 
it charges much faster, much much faster. Gaelic, gun, a royal purple ball formed in my hand, fire, I yelled out as I pushed my hands forward firing out a royal purple beam at the last targets, obliterating them quickly. After the beam faded, I fell on the ground. I closed my eyes and heard steps coming towards me. I look up and open my eyes to see the face of a very familiar purple dragon, Subspike. Are you okay? He asks. I sit up and see the girls and Celestia standing around me, me? Yeah I'm perfectly fine, just not used to using all of my attacks like that, so just give me a minute. I see a bright flash of magenta and sky blue light appear and I look in the sky to see an orb composed of the same colors, so I'm guessing that's my target? Twilight nods, yes, Rarity and I made it as strong as we could. I nod, I know I can feel it, but it still isn't enough, Celestia do you think you could add some of your power to it? I asked, looking at her. Are you sure? It could be too sturdy even for you to destroy, she said keeping her cool demeanor. I stood up and smirked, then my face hardened with a smile as I looked at her, the Saiyans are a proud warrior race, don't underestimate us. She gives a small smile and furs a beam of golden light at the target, causing it to grow and give off the same golden glow, there it should be strong enough to withstand any attack now. I crack my neck and knuckles, we'll see about that, but I still need one more favor, I grab the mic from next to me, every unicorn in the audience, even the princess, I want you to cast your most powerful barrier spell to form a wall between me and you all. Why would the need to do that? Spike asked, well, if I can destroy that even with the princess's magic infused into it, then the heat and wind from the blast will cause a lot of you to be severely hurt and I don't want that. I said. Spike chuckled nervously. Well you heard the guy Twilight, I'm going to go find Rarity and sit with her. He ran off right after he said that. Okay everyone, on my signal, create the barrier. 3, 2, 1, now. I shouted out, and every unicorn in the area used their magic to create a massive barrier. I looked around to make sure they were all behind it, which they were. Except Celestia. Ah, you're still here because? I really don't want you to be hurt. I shall be fine, I'm also staying because I wish to judge how truly strong you are, just in case you decide to attack my little ponies, she said with the same unchanging stare. Man she is hard to read, fine, just strengthen the barrier I don't want them hurt. Very well, I don't wish to see my ponies harmed either. She pointed her horn towards the barrier and used her own spell on it, giving it a golden glow. I chuckled, very Greek, that barrier, but thank you. I crossed my arms yet again and charged up to my halfway point and stopped. Alright so you all have seen me up to half my strength now get red for full power. A warning things are about to shake, rattle, and roll. I went back into my charging stance but instead of keeping calm and quiet, ha ha, and I continued that for until I was fully charged but my charging caused the disturbance of dust and rocks and such, so I was blocked from view and even the ground started to crack and shake. Then it stopped. I heard murmurs from behind the barrier but I stood still and wait for the dust to settle. A few seconds later all the dust cleared and the first thing anyone saw were sparks of red and black lightning flying around my body, which was giving off a faint glow. That, is so, awesome, I heard Dash yell from behind the barrier. I looked to Celestia to see if she was okay which she was, she just had a wing DD in front of her and when she moved it she gave a slight cough. I told you it would be dusty, I said. She nodded, that it is, but you did warn me it would be. Now my question is why do you have lighting sparking around you? Ah now that is a good question with a simple answer, it is just some excess key that my body couldn't contain so it's sparking some out and then absorbing it back in, but no need to let them know that, they just think it looks cool, I said with a very wide smile. I turned to the crowd to speak but quickly realized I had no microphone, uh. I can handle that, Celestia lit up her horn and then my throat was covered in the same golden aura, go ahead and talk. Okay. Whoa, ow, ears, ahem, still cool, right well now I'm at 100% power. 120 million, still pretty weak back on my home planet. Now for this attack you'll have to look closely to see it. Again I formed my hand into the gun shape but added my middle finger to it and placed my left hand on the crook of my arm. This is my ultimate attack, my finishing move, my aura, along with the lightning, suddenly disappeared, double barrel quick shot. I fired off the attack, yet nothing was seen or heard other than a faint ding a split second later. 
The crowd started to boo and such and when Celestia was about to calm them down I shook my head and pointed at the target, there was a small white speck on it, I would put up a barrier around you if I were you. She nodded and put up a dome-shaped barrier around herself. I looked back up to the target to see the white speck grow instantly into a tremendous explosion twice the size of the target which was a good 30 to 40 feet across. The explosion whipped up a huge wind that knocked some tress down and rolled some of the larger boulders within the area. I looked at the barrier everyone made, it was holding up well and then I looked to Celestials and I saw it starting to crack. And of course one of the boulders was flying right towards it. I rushed over there before she even knew what happened and smashed the boulder and anything else that threatened to come this way, which was a surprising amount. When it was all over there was a small pile of stones around me and the target was just shimmering dust in the air. The barriers fell and I was panting, so, that, was my full power plus some since the actually attack is stronger than the key I put out, never understood that honestly. I sat down after I finished saying that. The crowd erupted in applause and the girls walked over and congratulated me while Spike gave me a high five or four in his case. You have a surprising amount of power, I underestimated the strength of the barrier that I needed, so thank you for protecting me on that account. Celestia said with a warm smile. No problem, but I know you are much stronger than me if you have to be, I said with a smirk. True but you look weak, did it really take that much out of you? Yeah but that doesn't mean I'm powerless. I just need a lot of food, and besides I still have physical strength and speed. I see, L let us treat you to some food, she said gesturing to herself, the girls and Spike. That would be nice, let's go, I got up and started walking, I glanced up into the sky, beautiful day today though. I suddenly felt a hard shove to my side, I staggered to the edge of the cliff from it and was losing my balance, I looked at the one who shoved me. Why? Was all I could ask. Because, Rainbow said, you are stealing my spotlight. And with that I fell, I fell a hundred feet before crashing to the ground with a painful shout. Everyone rushed over to the edge of the cliff and I could hear them shouting after me. I started to move when a large shadow passed over me, I looked up in time to see a huge rock crush me. At their perspective twilight rounded on Rainbow who was looking extremely distraught, what did you do? She shrunk down and muttered incoherent words, he, he said, he said, he could survive, that the fall, wouldn't kill him. Wouldn't kill him, he looks pretty crushed, twilight roared out. We didn't plan the rock falling, she cried out, true, she didn't, a voice said from behind. Back to Shio asterisk a few seconds ago I heard the shouting from under the boulder, come looks like it's time to get up, I pushed the boulder from on top of me without making too much noise. I stood up and dusted off my clothes. I started to fly to the top when I heard Rainbow yell out, we didn't plan the rock falling. True, she didn't, I said, having everyone round on me and gasp, sup? I asked casually. How? They all asked in unison, well that was, creepy. Anyway, well for me to even be damaged some or something of equal strength or greater strength has to hit me or fight me or etc. And you're probably asking why, well, I know it's harsh but I went to Rainbow this morning and came up with an idea for a prank. The plan was that she was to push me off out of jealousy, what wasn't planned but both of us was the rock falling. I said, a smile slowly spreading across my face as I saw everyone slowly get angry with me. But the rock was firmly in the wall and I didn't see any possible way that it could have gotten dislodged in such a short time and none of your attack hit over there, Twee said. I shook my head, actually one did, think about it. Her eyes widened, oh, but I thought you said, what in tarnation are y'all talking about? AJ asked. Oh sorry, his voice is what caused Hirok to fall, that shout was an attack, but I thought you said that you could only use four attacks, she said the fist bid to AJ and the last to me. No I said I can only modder four, I can use every attack no to living kind, though they wouldn't be significantly weaker. Like that shout, called vice shout, normally it's used to paralyze but it can be used to knock people and things back, which is what I used to make the rock fall. Sorry everyone I didn't mean to worry you all, somewhat. Their mouths were still open though to which I just raised an eyebrow. Probably wondering how you're flying, Celestia said randomly. Right exertion of key, etc. I waved it off, after that I was given full on death glares but it was all forgiven shortly. We all made our way towards town and everyone went back to what they were doing beforehand. So all that was left was me, Celestia, the girls, and Spike 
O and a few fillies and colts who kept asking me questions. Later in the Da Celestia had O leave to take care of duties and the girls had to go back and get on with their chores and such, so it was just me, Spike, and the fillies and colts. Other than that my day was pretty simple though I did have to help out after I showed how strong I was, dang it. But during the end of the day I went back to the castle to find Luna in the throne room. Since she still had a few minutes to spare I told her about today and then I went to my room where I was greeted by Wuna and we went to sleep. Oh. Wait I did forget one thing. Right as I fell asleep I felt a dark presence in the air, hopefully it's nothing. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.